to Conversations on the Rocks, the podcast where the drink is strong and the stories are stronger. I'm your host, Kristen Dokus, and this isn't your average chat fest. Here, real people spill the tea alongside their favorite drinks, from the hilarious to the heart-wrenching. Each episode, a wild card. You'll laugh, you may cry, but you'll definitely learn something new. So grab whatever wets your whistle and buckle up. It's time to dive into the raw, the real, and the ridiculously human. Let's get this chat party started. Hey, everybody, it's Kristen, and you are listening to the latest episode of Conversations on the Rocks, the show that is as random as the tumbleweed that rolls through my head. And we are doing our second episode of my very special Gen Z focus. And with me today, I have Ariana Mergenovich. But Hello. we know her as Ari, and I just want y'all to know that's only the second time I've ever said her last name, and I got it right. And because my last name is Docus, I'm very particular about that <laughs> because it's uh, like I taught the girls at a really young age, and I don't, I, I, I want to hear how you would do this to correct people. They're like, I don't, you know, because of course it's Docus and you know what Mm -hmm. Dukakis I mean I'm like we're not Greek people we're Lithuanian yeah and so I finally taught that and this is when I met their dad I had to do this which was hocus pocus docus right Mm -hmm. and uh so I and they were like I don't want to correct somebody I'm like no you need to it's your name otherwise you're going to be doing this your entire life so did you have a little like rhymey thing or something to help people with your last name and did I get it right the second time yeah, you did. You got it right. <laughs> With the last name, honestly, I viewed that as a lost cause. I was like, people, it was like, I also played baseball. So, and people got my first and last name wrong. So it was like, every time I was up to bat, it was like, uh, Ariana more something. Like they, they just couldn't say it. So the one thing I do correct people on is my first name. And I always just say like, Ariana, like a pirate. <laughs> And that usually sticks. That's usually my my ringer. I get I mean, a lot of Ariana and Ariel and Adriana, all that stuff. Ariana. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're like me, like when you make a reservation and they go, "How do you spell that?" I always like spell it however you want to. Yeah. Well, actually, I have eleven letters in my last name, so um, it goes perfectly with the Mickey Mouse theme song. So you can do M R D J E N O V I C H. Oh my god. I love it. I think Sydney tried to tell me something like that, and but yeah. she she even messed that up. Yeah. So you guys, so you guys, Ari, who is we're how we I know her as, and that's how we're going to refer to her as throughout this, is a very close friend of my middle Sydney, and she lives in the lovely area of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, home of the black and gold everything. Oh yeah, Steel City. <laughs> So I've known you now for like a couple of years. Has it been a couple of years? I think it's been a little over one. I I think. How long have you been at the same job with her? Sid and I started working together like uh, two and a half years ago, but we didn't really fully come together as friends for a while, which I don't, I don't even know how that happened, but. Yeah. Same considering how good friends you are now. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Well, I'm 25 years old. I'm going to be turning 26 and uh, that's coming up soon in August. I, 26 is a very daunting age. It's the insurance year of life. So uh, I work at the melting pot slinging fondue. Hopefully not literally, because that would be yeah. really messy. <laughs> I, I've, I'm lucky to be one of the servers that have not spilled anything on, on any guests. Nice. So there's some horror stories out there for sure. Hot pots plus guests is not, it's not a good combo for sure. No. Not at all. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm working at the melting pot. I'm going back to school in the fall. I'm going to be um, taking ASL classes to eventually be an ASL interpreter. So I love it. I yeah. love it. So last week I had my eldest child who is the exact same age as you. I didn't realize that you're a month older than Mackenzie because mm-hmm. her birthday is in September. She'll be 26. And everyone who knows me and wants to start getting into anything or any conversation knows how much I love your generation. I think your generation is definitely going to save if anything can save our world right now, it's your generation. Gen X, we don't care. We don't care. Yeah. 
<laughs> We're, you know, nobody paid attention to us our entire lives. So why should we care now? I love the meme. It says that we're the generation between, you know, millennials and boomers uh, and just watching them, you know, go at it. And we're like, peace out. Uh, yeah. But I love your generation. I have always gotten so much energy out of you guys. And I, I really do. You're, you're going to do remarkable things. You guys are you're not afraid to push back. You know, you you recognize what the quality of life is that you want. There's just so much good about you. You're very fluid. You're not afraid to be who you are. And I think a lot of that, and, you know, well, I know in Sid's and her sisters, it's a lot that's because of my generation, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we were kind of the first, gen well, again, we were the forgotten generation. So we were just, we're like, we're going to do things our way, right? Mm -hmm. And so we kind of set the, set the table for you, if you will. But when you and I first started talking, I was very intrigued by your topic. And it's one that I think is so interesting because it's not one that we really think about too much and, and we really need to a little bit more and that is the lgbtq representation in media talk to me a little bit about that i mean this is something that i've always been kind of passionate about because i'm gay so like growing up in that kind of i don't know growing up as gay you you look for yourself as just like a person you look for yourself in media you want to see reflections so you can relate because i feel like that's what media is all about like tv shows you want to watch love stories that give you hope for the love that you'll one day have and like i don't know i just feel like that's like the beauty of television and um so I don't know. It's just something I've been passionate about. I feel like whenever you're able, and it also, honestly, I think it impacts society. Like whenever closed minded, you could say closed minded people see somebody in uh, maybe a minority group that they maybe in real life don't agree with that lifestyle or whatever. And then they fall in love with a character. I think that impacts them. And I think that it like turns tides in society, whether it be something just as small as somebody like that, you know, that kind of situation. I, I just think it's important. Um, and you're right. It is very important. And, you know, I've thinking back as you were saying that over the past several years, and it's nice that over the past several years, I can't even say a decade. It hasn't been a decade. It's only been in the past several years. You're starting to see your mainstream companies, your big corporations are starting to do this. And, you know, you'll get the, I'm trying to remember, we're just going to say it was Kellogg's. I don't know if it was, don't come at me if it wasn't, where they had, you know, two dads making waffles for their kid right and then you always have the backlash of people going oh my god i'm never gonna buy your waffles again and they're like we don't care don't buy our waffles yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, but there's still not enough of that yeah and, and is it ever any more evident than it is right now where we stand as a society and the political nature of everything that's going on do you think we'll ever win do we have to wait for all of these people to die before we start seeing some equality? Cause you know me, know. I'm a big, I love my gays. I love them. I will mama bear the shit out of them anytime, anywhere. Yeah. And, it, and it really, it ticks me off. It really does. And I, I'm sorry. I could go on and on and on about it. No, the passion is real. Like I, I think it's, I, I feel like there is so much backlash and like in regards to like just waiting for people to die off, unfortunately, that kind of mindset is just, it's always going to exist. And honestly, no, it, you're right. It's like, because these people are uh, like conservative people that don't like those types of people are having the most kids. They're having families of 18, you know? You're right. No, you're right about that. And you learn what you live which exactly. is that is never going to change. You learn what you live. And if your if your parents hate, you're going to hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some of the more significant milestones or turning points that you've seen in the representation for our gay community over the years? Honestly. So, I mean, there's the L word. The L word has a lot of, I would say a lot of pros and cons. There's a lot of really terrible representation in the L word, but 
I think the beautiful thing about that TV show is that it's just normal. That's just like, it's just the show. And it's like, there is a heavy focus on everyone being lesbians, but it's like, this is just a show about lesbians for lesbians living in LA, just like living their little lesbian lives. And that's just, it's just normal. And if you, and here's my thing on that too, where it goes back to any of this, it's like, I'm sorry, if you don't like it, turn it the F off. Yeah. Go find all in the family because that probably suits some of these people a little bit. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like for every, you look at 10 shows for every nine that there are straight, there might be one that has like uh, one small queer storyline. And I don't know. I just think incorporating those little roles, creating some sense of normalcy, like they're out there. Gay people are out there. Trans people are out there. It's just like, it should be reflected because media is a ref- reflection of reality. I think we have come a long way with being a lot of people have become more accepting of our gay friends. What I am seeing a really, really tough time with these people trying to deal with now is our trans. And it's almost like, okay, it's like one step forward, two steps back. We get one step forward with our, you know, our, our gays and our lesbians, right? Our gays. And then, then come along the trans, quote unquote, right? I'm mm-hmm. saying that in a horrible way, but then it's like two steps back. Right. Do you find yourself getting kind of everybody getting lumped into one bowl altogether? Does that make sense? Because it just it's like you don't hear as much or let me rephrase that i'm not hearing as much roaring over the gay community now everything's about the trans community Mm -hmm. and a lot it's it's like it's shifted they just took i think the same rhetoric and then just like shifted it toward this other group and i think you're right it's like oh i'm cool you want to love who you want to love whatever but i can't with like these pronouns and all this stuff it's it's like that's too far yeah it and i just think it's a lack of understanding you go back back in the day a gay a gay bar they were getting stormed by the police because it was just like it was indecent and i think a lot of the stuff going on out there is is it's just transferring to a different enemy it's it's unfortunate and i think that it's like and then going back to like the representation in media, like in in a lot of these shows, when there is a trans character, it's like they were deceiving everybody the whole time. And I think that representation bleeds into the reality and how people view trans people. Like, oh, you're you were concealing this like deep dark secret this whole time. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I definitely think trans issues are like way less accepted and way less like the common person isn't going to be as for it or as accepting you know what i mean you know the beautiful thing about (laughs) the human race i guess is that we're all different we're all unique and i know it seems so simplistic but sometimes i am a very simplistic person and it makes sense to me in the whole why can't like I I don't care. I don't care what somebody else does if it's not harming someone else. If you're harming someone or something, then yes, I have an issue with it. Mm -hmm. I may, you know, I'm not a church going person. Does that make me not a Christian? No, it doesn't make me not a Christian, but I'm just not a church going person. You want to go to church? Go to church. I'm not going to think less of you or more of you. You shouldn't think less or more of me. So I just, it just, I'm so, I, I, I have, even though I do social media for a living, I have to stay off of it unless I'm working because mm-hmm. it is just a dumpster fire. Our world and our humanity is just a dumpster fire. But anyways, we can talk about that all night. So <laughs> what are some, what are some of the common stereotypes or tropes that you see in the LGBTQ portrayals and how can people move beyond them being, you know, writers, producers, and, you know, human beings. What are, I mean, it seems like, like you just said, the, if, if, if there's a trans person on a show, 
that it's going to turn into, oh, you're hiding something. But it does. It seems like, you know, it it kind of goes back to the 70s when if you were a blonde, you were, you know, you were a dingbat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Everyone has these perceptions of what they think. And like, have you ever have you ever seen the show Ugly Betty? Yes, I love it. So, you know, the whole Alexis storyline. Yes. That I feel like is a perfect representation of that like deception trope where it's like Alexis comes back and is this beautiful blonde and uh uh-oh, actually this is the, the dead brother that just like, you know, like, it's like a bad soap opera, but, but whenever Alexis was a- alive before she was beloved by everyone. It's like, she- she's not changed. She may have physically changed in like how you view her, but she's still just as great of a, of a business owner and all that stuff as she was before there. I mean, obviously it's ug- ugly Betty. So there right. some crazy stuff going on in there, but I think a-, a good representation would probably be like in euphoria with Joel's like, I think there's some like sketchy stuff obviously that goes on in euphoria, but I think how Jules is just like, she just comes in and she's beautiful and the main character like falls in love with her. It's just, it is what it is. It's not like this huge deal that she's trans or that Rue's falling in love with a trans girl. Like it just is what it is. I think that's the way that you got to handle stuff like that. I am a huge Shit's Creek fan. Like my daydream is to have a Shit's Creek life and have a Rose Motel. And I felt that did you watch it? I've only seen bits and pieces, unfortunately. Okay, this is where I chastise you. <laughs> but because it's incredible and you have to and did we talk about this the last time I was there? I know I talked about it with Sid and Janelle, but it the first few episodes, you're kind of like <laughs> But you have to get through the first few episodes before it really, the character development happens. And Mm -hmm. I feel the way they handled David, who obviously is very gay, um, how they handled that was beautiful. And I think that's, I know that's one of the reasons why the gay community loves that show so much, Mm -hmm. because they handled it so well. And I can't remember the exact quote of it, but there's that scene where I'm sure you've seen a meme about it where he's talking about labels. Have you seen that where uh, where he's holding a bottle of somebody's asking him a question about his sexuality and he's holding a bottle of uh, wine and he goes, well, you know, let's take this bottle and I'm going to completely annihilate this. But he's like, let's take this bottle. He goes on the outside. It has a bottle. It has a label that says that I'm red wine. He's like, but on the inside, it might be white wine, but on the outside or this bottle, it might be. And so how he describes just like, you can't just label somebody for, you know, and say what's on. It's kind of like the, you can't judge a book by its cover. Right. Yeah. But he was speaking on how he can be very fluid and he goes, you know, some days I might be red. Some days I might be white. I just, some days I might be a rosé. He goes, I just don't know. It depends on the situation that I'm in. Highly recommend that you watch it because just the way it is, I I keep saying, I'm going to go back and rewatch it. It's that moving of a show. It's just, incredible i can't believe it's been gone for five years but i think they did an excellent job with him and his and you know his relationship with you know the man that he was seeing and it was just the way they wrote it it just it was normal Mm -hmm. it was normal and it was so beautiful to see like it wasn't you know they had their fights they i mean it just was so nice to see the producers and the writers make it as normal as a heterosexual relationship, right? Yeah. Um, you know, look at Neil Patrick Harris. He's very good at being able to do things of that nature. You know, he does so much with his whole family, his husband and his children. Mm-hmm. I think they, I think they, he does a great job. What are some of the other, you know, examples like that, that you've seen that strike you that you go, they really are doing a good job. Um, that's a good, I mean, so have you ever seen um have you ever seen pose i haven't so you can chastise me if you want (laughs) oh no that's okay it's actually it's a pretty short series i believe it was on fx and 
Pose is basically about the ballroom scene, I believe, in like the 80s and 90s during the AIDS crisis and stuff like that. Oh. So it's a very heavy show, but I think it is just like such a it's so so well done. They employed trans actresses. They just like they threw out that representation that I feel like was just so it was like prime. Exactly. Like if I could bet, put, stamp a badge on it and be like, they did a great job. I would, because it's just been, I think that is also one of those shows where you watch and you're like, wow, that is, I don't know. You just never, you, if you didn't experience that lifestyle, if you didn't experience that era, it just, it, it educates you at the same time. So I love that. Like um, I, li- I lived through that time so and i had a lot of friends that you know a lot of my gay you know my guy my guy friends that went through that you know it 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 was a horrible time it really was and it was hard obviously challenging for them to go through on that how do you i was i'm looking it up that's why i'm not looking at you Uh, Um, okay the the how did I used to be an ambassador for Netflix and when Orange is the New Black came out in 2013, that was really cutting edge. Have you watched the whole series? I didn't watch the last season. But I, I, I'll, I'll watch admit it. I didn't watch the last half of the last season. So by that point it had kind of jumped the shark, but I think they did a really good job, especially almost 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. And I think I, I will say that the, Orange is the new black. I definitely had to like pace myself with that because there's so much tragedy in regard oh, God, yes. to everything. Oh, and spoiler alert, when Pousse died, that was like it, it was devastating. It was awful. I was like, my jaw was on the ground. Um, but you know, Laverne Cox was very much a trans oh, yeah. a trans woman and you know, in, in real life. And I mm-hmm. think it was I'm so glad they had her. First of all, she's phenomenal. Sydney and I went to go see her at Wake Forest when she came to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, somebody may or may not have been like lurking around trying to like find her backstage, but I won't, <laughs> I won't say anything. Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, for them to use her as, or cast her, I shouldn't say use her, cast her in like nine years ago, I think was mm-hmm. very forward thinking. And I think maybe they kind of set the stage to be a little bit more cutting edge, you know, app- allegedly and supposedly all the conservatives are outraged that Netflix donated money to Kamala. And we're like, oh. yeah, <laughs> we're quitting. We're canceling. We're like, bye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, it's like, how can, how can you expect anything less? Like, have you ever seen Sense8? No. So that's a shorter series too. It's only two seasons, but it is very much, it's very much representation central, which I, I think is, is phenomenal. There's a lot, there's not only like, there's lesbians, there's trans lesbians, there's bisexual, there's like every, every letter in the LGBTQIA plus community they represent that show uh which is great uh, maybe, um, maybe maybe that's the reason they can't handle it is because there's so many letters they can't remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i feel like yeah they, what do they say the alphabet mafia it's i great. love it i've never heard that that's awesome i i kind of love that sometimes <laughs> sometimes they'll coin terms like that i'm like i actually they they kind of ate with that <laughs> It just, you know, and we're kind of getting away from the media thing, but I just, again, I'm going to go back to your generation and the fact that you guys are so fluid, you know, love is love, man. And like, you guys are more like the 70s and 60s and 70s hippies than anything. It's like, love is love. And it's like, you know, why do I have to fit into your mold if I want to love this woman or, you know, this trans person? And it just, I, the, for, for people filled with so much hate to come at people filled with so much love, mm-hmm. it just boggles my mind. I just can't wrap my head around it. But I, I would say the, the Gen Z being open kind of factor, I think it does tie, tie back into the media aspect of things because I remember being in high school, like a sophomore and I, I always say my one of my awakenings was Fifth Harmony. They were like this girl group mm-hmm. 
that that I do know. Yeah, <laughs> I I read a lot of fan fiction about them. I and I was like, wow, the, I don't know, it just like snowball affected, and there weren't that many shows at the time that had like le- lesbian representation. And when there are so few shows that are out that have that representation, I think that sometimes some people do uh, drop the ball and they like follow through with tropes to kind of make it more, I guess, edible for, for the community that, because they want it to be generally accepted. They want everybody to watch their show. But I think that growing up and seeing some of these shows like the hundred with Lexa and Clark, which I have my issues with that, but at least having it out there was nice. Like there was um, Supergirl with mm-hmm. what's her name? Supergirl's sister. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what's her name? The little tested. sisters always the little <laughs> sisters always get forgotten. There was um, Grey's Anatomy with Callie in Arizona, and ha- being able to at least have those shows to hold on to, I think allowed our generation to be like oh this is okay like having some happy endings out there for somebody that looks like you or acts like you or likes the same type of people as you i think really does impact society and i think it does tie into that with how our generation views things because we've been able to see so much and it's not gay related but just in in general representation matters Mm-hmm. everybody's not white everybody's not straight it's like last year when disney did the little mermaid with ariel being black mm-hmm. and just what i mean I, I just got chills thinking about it just watching all of these little african-american girls just be in awe because they were seeing somebody that looked like them yeah and then here come these people to shit all over it yeah it's like it, I, she's a white mermaid <laughs> first of all mermaids don't exist yeah exactly. that's like that's like saying you can ha- you can't have a black unicorn yeah you can have a black unicorn if you want to have black unicorn because they're not real exactly they can be exactly. purple they can be or whatever and it just it's like really do you have to go there and then it, yeah. and like the whole thing too with kamala we'll go back to kamala it's like and we'll even kick it further back to taylor swift right and you'll understand where i'm going with this is all of these men that just lost their minds over the fact of, you know all the attention taylor swift was getting at the football games talk to mm-hmm. the camera guy dude talk to yeah. the camera guy talk to the nfl because they are they're counting their money with her right but the meme that came out and the and the point being made of these pe- these women are not hearing what you're saying, but your daughters, your ch- your granddaughters, your nieces, your wife, your sisters, they're hearing it, and they're he- they're hearing you say you don't matter. Exactly, that's a great point. I I totally agree, and it's just like those pa- the particularities of it all. Like it's just like I don't know, and like you said earlier, just turn it off if you if you don't like it, just don't watch it. Exactly. I do not watch, I, we don't even have cable. We don't have, we stream 100% in this household. So it is very rare that we watch mainstream TV. And so I don't know anything about the shows that are on. I don't know, you know, I nothing, absolutely nothing. We do watch our guilty pleasure is Big Brother. Not going to lie. Every year we do it, but we also have a, a, a pool. <laughs> so we bet on it. Okay. If you want to, next year, well, just let me know. Um, <laughs> so where I'm going with it is like, I don't watch those shows. So I don't know if there's any representation of our gay community in any of the like, you know, sitcoms and the, the shows of that. Do you? I mean, I know we're starting to see more commercials and advertisements. So I feel like maybe there's a little bit of progress coming that way. But I don't know if that's the case with any of the like the regular scheduled programming or whatever you want to call it. Right now, the shows that I the first shows that I think of are the shows that I'm watching. Um, House of the Dragon. There's, there's but some... that's streaming. That's streaming. Oh, like in prime time. Like yeah, on... like in prime time. I don't so, know. I don't think there is. 
I don't think there is. And I think that's kind of like still the safe space quote. And I don't mean safe space, but I'm just kind of like the generic um, cracker, white, pure kind of area. And I think it's these streamings because you're right. Well, my God, did you ever watch uh, Casanova? No, not Casanova. Um, uh, Buccaneers? Not yet. Like I told you to. Okay. I'm tell- there's, a, there's a whole storyline in there as well of a, a lesbian storyline in there. Yeah, there's, I, I have to, is that on streaming or is that, is that? Yeah, it's um, on Netflix. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, especially as a, you know, as a Bridgerton fan, I'm oh, telling yeah. you, it's, I almost think it's, I want you to watch it. I want Sid to watch it. I want all of you guys to watch it. And then I want to have a conversation about it. We can have, because they, for it to be, and, and for those of you that may not be familiar, it is along the lines of Bridgerton, except it's the, the women are American and their parents are like, there's nobody good enough in America for our kids. So we're going to ship our daughters over to London for the, for the same type of season. Right. Mm-hmm. And, but there's all of these amazing kind of the same thing, very Bridgerton ish, you know, they've got pop music in classical format, but they have so many cool understories going on. And one of them, it's not, but it's the, the um, attraction between two of the girls is not an understory. It's an actual story throughout the whole thing. So, but yeah, absolutely. On some of these private things, it's 100%. You're starting to see some great representation there mm-hmm. and it's intense. It's hot. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm talking about in general, you're like, okay, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Like I, I, I just feel like they're just, and what you said that it's a main story and not a side story. Like I feel like that was something that it was kind of like, a lot of media or not media, I guess TV shows mostly that was like something that they relied on. They were like, okay, here's your, your poster children for heterosexuality. And then a little bit of gay, a little bit of gay. Like, it's an asterisk. It's yeah, an asterisk. Yeah. Like with Buffy, like, have you ever watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I, that actually was super popular when I was a very young mother. I didn't have time for Buffy. That is fair. That is fair. And when Buffy was one of, uh, one of my favorite it's probably one of my favorite shows of all time um, everybody loved it it's one of those i probably should revisit now that i you know have time it's so campy and corny and funny like it's just so great but i mean it's kind of an example of that where eventually down the line one of the main characters starts dating a girl but it's like it's like buffy and angel and then willow and tara buffy and angel and then a little bit of willow and tara <laughs> and that story kind of I, I don't know if I would classify it as good representation or bad representation because it kind of it comes into this trope. It's called the barrier gaze trope, where basically the writer will write this big, beautiful, like we've been waiting for this moment with a couple that's gay and then kill one of them off. Of course, because somebody's got to die. Exactly. And there's like it, the same thing happens in the hundred. It, the same thing happens in a lot of stuff like skins, uh, vampire diaries, the lesbians die. It's like, you can't be a lesbian <laughs> in a TV show and stay alive for more than a season. It's just not possible. You know, your time is coming to an end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. And I think, I don't know. I, I think that they, a lot of people. So for example, with the hundred, I forget who the writer, what, what the writer's name was, but it was so, it was so poorly written. It was so stupid. And I, there was so much backlash. Everyone stopped watching the show because they're like, it was 2015 or something. And everyone's like, all right, this is enough. We've seen this so many times. Why can't we just have a happy ending for, for the couple that we're shipping? I was just trying to, speaking of Bridgerton, did you finish the last season? I did. So they kind of had a little bit of a, interesting little bit going on in there as well with the with what's his name oh crap oh uh, with uh, benedict yes yes oh yeah yeah <laughs> i forgot about that yeah so it, it so it's interesting it's it's a i think maybe some of these uh production companies are afraid that I think they need to get a little bit more courageous. Mm-hmm. The people that are going to be offended by it most likely are over here watching ABC. Yeah. And I think there's a fine line between 
putting everything in your face and being gross about it, which how is that? Love is love, right? Mm -hmm. But it just, it needs to be more just a, a natural, like, okay, so it's two guys, it's two girls, whatever. Yeah. I did feel like with the Bridgerton storyline, I was like, cause you know how Bridgerton is so it's like soft core at some point. Absolutely. And Anna and I were watching it and I was like, why do they keep cutting away? They don't do this with any other couple on Bridgerton. Usually it's like a 10 minute, like full right. out scene, but with Benedict and, uh, I was like, what the heck? They're on they're but I think that they were sprinkling it and they're testing the waters. For I sure. agree. And and you know, smart on them, right? Smart yeah. on them. Did you see that he is the um he is the fourth season's love story? Oh, okay. They just announced that last week. I didn't see that. Yeah. I, that I guess that makes sense. I they they were definitely setting him up for that. Yeah. I, think. I mean, come on, those people are crazy. They had nothing else to do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> barely had electricity yeah all right any kind of closing thoughts what else what have we not talked about that you want to talk about make sure we hit hmm. i don't you know had, I you came very well prepared notes. and you wrote your notes down so look at your notes and say hmm what have i not said what do i really want to get out there to Kristen's five listeners <laughs> uh which is funny because i actually have more listeners on youtube than i do i have a lot of people on youtube I don't know why. It's kind of odd. I think YouTube. I mean, YouTube is the number two search engine in the world, isn't it? Yep. Right behind. Everyone loves YouTube. Right behind Google. I mean, I think, I guess my closing statement would mostly be something along the lines of, um, I feel that obviously it's really important to have representation in media, but I think it's even more important for it to be good representation. I think, you know, Having the sassy gay man being the butt of the joke only, you can only do that so many times. Having the predatory lesbian like in Pitch Perfect being like super creepy and, you know, like they're driving a U Haul. Yeah, like there's representation, which is, is one foot in the door in a way, maybe a pinky toe in the door, but there's like good representation, which I think is really important it's not only important for just society as a whole but i think it's important for the individual whether that be somebody in the community to be able to see somebody that reflects their own life and their own wants and needs or somebody who is so far removed from the community to see somebody that they may may never meet in person to give them the opportunity to love somebody that maybe one day they're in a small town and a gay person or a trans person walks into a bar because they saw that one show where they loved that one character. They'll treat them with kindness instead of reject them. So I think just got to do a little bit more to make a little bit more good representation on, on TV and in movies and even on YouTube. Right. You know? I want to see a Hallmark Christmas movie that has a gay couple. There is a, a reminiscent there. It's called the happiest season and it is interesting. <laughs> really? Yep. Kristen yeah. Kristen Stewart and Aubrey Plaza are in it. I have to check that out. You all yeah. have to check it out. I, um, when I finally last year, I was always the no, no, no with the Hallmark Christmas movies. And I went, you know what? This is the perfect thing to put on while I'm working other, like doing other things because it's so cheesy. And and I think that's why I like it. Started liking it. Like this is, this is like a Harlequin romance on TV that unfolds in an hour and 52 minutes. And it's so simple. They're all so simple. And And you know what? I think what I discovered last year is, um, that in the art the world that we're living in right now as stupid and cheesy as they are it was like a nice escape to go oh there is a place somewhere even if it's in my head that's happy and pleasant and everything you know there's always a happy happily ever after yeah (laughs) yeah those, those those are great honestly it's a little escape i totally agree Total escape. Ari, thank you so much for doing this. And 
I want you to hang on after we stop recording so that we can say a formal goodbye. But in the meantime, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something. And just remember, at the end of the day, representation does matter. And Ari and all of our friends and the Gen Z generation have things to say that are super, super important to hear if you just stop and take the time to listen. Until next time, I hope your drinks or coffee are as strong as your will to finish watching the Olympics. And let's go Team America. USA, USA. (laughs) As the saying goes, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And that's a wrap for this week's episode. A big thanks to my guests for sharing their story and to you for listening. Don't forget to share the show with your friends and spread the words. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, the link is in the show notes. Till next time. Cheers. Cheers.